Hey everyone, Mr. Fugay, and for this video today, we're going to talk about how we can find the equations of perpendicular bisectors. So, this is mainly an Algebra 1 base lesson where we're going to be using slope intercept form, point slope form, finding slopes of lines, but there's one little geometry element here that we do need to talk about before we get there, and that is what is a perpendicular bisector? So, we're going to break that word down by the two words that are in there. So, perpendicular by definition is telling us that two lines or two segments that meet at a 90 degree or a right angle. And then the second part of that definition is the term bisector. And so when we talk about what a bisector is, that's going to cross at its midpoint. And so the definition here is that a segment, ray, or line that is perpendicular to, I don't know why it looks like an A there, to the segment at its midpoint. So over here in the diagram on the right, if you notice, line CP, so the vertical line that you see on the screen, is crossing at the midpoint P on segment AB, hence the little congruence marks that we have there. And when it meets at point P, it forms a 90 degree angle. So those are the two elements that we need to look for when we are, number one, recognizing it in a diagram, and number two, being able to find its equation. Now, there's another word here we'll use every so often, so let's go ahead and discuss it anyways. If we use the term equidistant, once again, let's break down the word. The prefix equa means equal. Distance, well, we're talking about the distance. So a point is equidistant if it is the same distance from two figures. Points that are on the perpendicular bisector are equidistant from the segment's endpoints. This is going to be really important for some discussion we're going to have later, but basically here's what it means. Here at point C, what I'm saying is that that individual point, C, is the same distance from point A as it is from point B. Now, it's not just point C. If I made another point down here and I called it D, that point that I just drew D, those two red dotted segments are also going to be equidistant. Not the same length as the green segments, but the two red segments are the same. So I could put a little dash on those. Actually, let's put double. And then for the green ones, we could put, I guess we'll do three. Now, I could do this all day. I'll, I'll even do one more just for demonstration purposes. I could go all the way down here to point, and we'll call it W. Those two blue segments that I'm drawing on the screen for you, those will also be equidistant. So keep that in mind, and then we're going to move and talk more about the algebraic process next. So if we want to find the equation of that perpendicular bisector, the first thing we need to do is to find the midpoint, and that's going to be using the midpoint formula. So just a reminder for the midpoint formula, it's x1 plus x2 over 2. Oops, I should not close that parenthesis because that's only the first coordinate, y1 plus y2 over 2. Step two, we need to figure out what the slope of the segment is, and so we have to go back to our trusted slope formula to help us figure out that number there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to find the perpendicular slope. So this was also something you've probably talked about in the past, but just as a reminder, for two lines to be perpendicular to one another, their slopes are going to be the opposite reciprocal. Oops, opposite, if I can spell opposite, let's try that again, take two, doing this in one take, opposite reciprocal. And just as a couple quick examples of what I mean by that, is if I have my initial slope as one half, it means that the slope that is perpendicular to it, so I'm using the perpendicular symbol there, is going to equal to negative 2 over 1 or 2. So you take the opposite sign and then you flip the fraction. Give you one more example. If I have negative 4 thirds, what would that perpendicular slope be? Well, it would be a positive slope. And then we would flip it, and so that slope would be 3 fourths. Final step is using that perpendicular slope and the midpoint we found in step one, we're going to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Now, there are two forms I'm going to accept here in terms of writing the equation of the line. So the first one is probably the one that you're most familiar with and that is most discussed in our algebra-based courses, and that's slope-intercept form. And you'll remember that as y equals mx plus b. Now, there's an extra step you have to go there because if you know the slope and you know that midpoint, you'll plug both those in for mx and y, and have to solve for b. So there is a step there, which brings me to my second point. This is a very 
lightly discussed topic in algebra-based courses, mainly because it's not important at those stages because you're just learning the foundations. But once now we've kind of got these skills under our belt, I really am a big fan of point slope form. And any of you who are interested in taking um, our AP Calculus course, we use point slope form in that class very uh, often. We use it a lot. So that form is y minus y1 equals m and then x minus x1. I always remember this because it's a, sort of a modification of the slope formula. And I'm not going to discuss it in this video, but if you have a question about how that's formed, please let me know. Um, but essentially, all you would have to do in this case is plug your slope in, that perpendicular slope you found, and then take that midpoint that you found, plug it there and there, and that is where you stop. You're done. You don't have to do any more. That's the equation of the line. Because we can always modify it if we had to actually, like, I don't know, graph it on the point plane, for example. So let's try two examples. I'm going to walk through one of them with you, and then I'll give you a chance to try one of these as we wrap up. So in this first example, I'm giving you the segment DE. And segment D is at 5 comma negative 1. So that's going to give me a point that's right about here. Let me get this graph frozen on the screen here. If you ever know that trick, you can set it as background. I do that for a lot of my notes, but sometimes I forget. All right, so that's point D right here. And then point E is negative 11. So it's going to be a little bit off the screen here. 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be over here. And that's point E. Draw your best straight segment if you can. Mine's not going to be the best, but close enough. Okay, step number one, as mentioned, is we have to find the midpoint. So that's step one. And so to find the midpoint, we're going to take those two points. So let's go ahead and do 5 plus negative 11 over 2. And then we're going to take negative 1 plus 3 over 2. That's going to give us our midpoint. So that's going to be negative 6 over 2 or negative 3. And then my other one is going to be 2 over 2 or just 1. So negative 3 comma 1 is going to be my midpoint. A good way to kind of check on your progress here is to plot that point. And you can see, even though my line is not perfect, that's going to be our midpoint. Why don't we just call it point M to make it remind ourselves it's midpoint. Okay, so we've got that under control. <clears throat> Step number two is, and we're looking up here at the top, we're going to find the slope of our segment. So the slope of... And I'm actually going to go ahead and call it slope of ED, just so we remember that that's what we're actually looking for. So uh, it's y2 minus y1, so 3 minus negative 1, or 3 plus 1, over negative 11 minus 5. Okay, so 3 plus 1 gives me 4, that's going to give me negative 16, so it looks like our slope simplified is going to be negative 1 4. Now that's not the slope that I want, because what I now need to do for my third step is we need to find the perpendicular slope instead. So if our original slope is negative one-fourth, we need to find our perpendicular slope. So the perpendicular bisector slope will be positive four over one. So that's the slope we're gonna work with. And now I'm gonna use that point slope form to show you how quick we can wrap this problem up. We now know our point, midpoint. So we know that the perpendicular bisector has to go through that point. We know it has to have this slope, which, by the way, we can use that to create the line on the coordinate plane in just a second. And so our equation, our, our perpendicular bisector, which is going to be our final answer, is going to be y minus 1, so y minus the y-coordinate, equals our slope 4, parentheses, x minus x1. So that's x minus negative 3, which is really just x plus 3. Guys, that's our equation. We're done. If you alternatively would like to use slope-intercept form, I'll go ahead and show that real quick. It would just be 1 equals 4 times negative 3 plus b. So we'd have to find that y-intercept. We add that over, we're going to get 13 equals b. And so the slope-intercept form version of this equation would be y equals 4x plus 13. But as I challenge you here to do now, all you could do, and this is why I like point-slope form, is if you wanted slope-intercept form, you simply, if you needed it, could take the original point-slope form equation that we got here, distribute that 4, and then add that 1 over, and guess what you're going to get? You're still going to get the same thing. So that's why I like point-slope form a lot. Uh, last thing, let's go ahead and plot this real quick. So if we're going to do that, like I said, we now know our midpoint is here at negative 3, 1. We know our slope is 4, so I'm just really going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, create my slope there of 4 over 1. 
And I really do like to do this. If you have the time and you have the coordinate plane accessible to you, I would graph it because now look, we can visually confirm that that blue line is indeed the perpendicular bisector of segment ED. It definitely is creating a right angle here. And we know that point M is creating equal segments EM and MD. So now it is your turn. I would like you to take this problem using this as a model, and I would like you to try the example over here on the right. Go ahead and pause this video, give this a try, and then I will have the solution for you here in about 10 seconds. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at what we've created here. So uh, first things first, I extended this red line just to kind of help us see the picture and see what was going on. But um, the blue, I'm sorry, the blue segment in this case, I think I had this reverse. This is actually segment AB right here. So let me actually take off the ends here just so that we can actually see that it's geometrically still going to be that perpendicular bisector. So there's A, there's B. I threw the midpoint in here. So let's go ahead and confirm what we're looking at here. So the midpoint I got as one comma zero. We can confirm that on the graph. Next, I found the original slope of the blue segment, which was positive two. I went right ahead and just found its perpendicular slope right away as negative one half. And down here, I have the equation. I gave it in this situation in slope intercept form. But if we wanted to go ahead and use that point slope form, we can see that that version would look like y minus zero equals negative one half parentheses x minus one. But really, if you actually look at it, it's almost going to be the exact same thing as that slope intercept form that you see down below. So those are our two acceptable answers there. And that is perpendicular bisector. So I want you to take the information that you learned from this video and now go out, try and practice this doing this by hand, and also give you a chance to try this through Desmos. Thanks for watching.